so far, I don't think I'm too far off, but this is almost state of the art. Okay. Uh, there are a few ways, and I just want to add this delete facial landmark detector in addition. There are a few ways called open face, face net. Uh, one of these, I think, is open face. Uh, no, is, uh, one of them is by, by one of them is used by Google. Is it face net, uh? which actually, uh, which actually uh, modified how the other algorithm is done. Okay, and this is the the whole process of open face. As you can see, this input image, the face is detected. Okay. And uh, this is this is the bounding box, what they call the bounding box. Bounding box is actually a technical term in, in face recognition or any of uh, any computer vision uh, context. Then some or other it identifies those parts of the face where it wants to call as a feature. Uh, further, then once it con hmm, detects, okay, then it transforms this face into a vector. Okay, actually this isn't really here. This this is um, and then once no, okay. So, sorry about that, huh? As you can see, yeah, uh, it detects the face. I don't know what it's transforming this for. It could be uh, face alignment, feature uh, face alignment, because sometimes the face is crooked, so they got to change it to make it straight up again. Uh, face alignment, and after that, they crop the whole picture, okay? And this is the only thing that actually goes into the database, this guy's face, okay? And inside the database, this face is processed through a neural network. And, a, and what it does is, it, this neural network converts into a 128 degree dimension, 128 dimension, which basically means 128, uh, 128 bit vector, or 128 bit, no, no, 128 number vector. Then a vector with 120, uh, a vector or matrix with 128. Uh, 128 numbers only. Okay. And then once you have the 128 um, dimension vector to represent Sylvester Stallone's face, you can send it for uh, either clustering similarity detection, which is uh, figuring out the, the location, uh, sorry, figuring out the distance of classification. These are all way, ways and means by which to recognize the face. So implicitly that there is a database down here of recognized of faces with names that uh, this query, 120 uh, dimension query can be compared against. Okay, I'm gonna take a break here. Uh, anybody got any questions? This is open face algorithm. This can get quite complicated already. But strangely enough, the OpenCV, again, a lot of this is hidden by OpenCV. So the OpenCV, you only need to do the calling. You just call the procedure, that's it. Okay. The next one is something called, the next way of uh, expressing the face is called the face net. Face net is a bit different. Uh, Remember the overall purpose of this is to get a query vector and then to compare that query vector against the reference database. Now, what is in the reference data? Then after that, now, what you can do is you can actually, um, the one that's closest to the query vector is taken as the match la, from the reference database. La. FaceNet uh, uh, changes the requirement a bit. FaceNet actually maximizes the different, sorry, maximizes the sum or maximizes the probability that this, uh, that your query will be similar to these guys. Okay, these guys, but minimizes the probability that your, qu your query will be dissimilar from this guys. So you can see that there's a, there is a three branch 
what we call a Siamese twin network here. Okay, all there are actually three CNNs here. And this CNN, there's another CNN here that calculates the, the what they call a triplet loss. And once this triplet, lo triplet loss is maximized in the database, that is far more accurate if you compare a query vector here. Now, this is pretty complicated, but um, it's not... To go into that is even worse. La. So please forgive me if uh, this is a bit... Uh, confusing or doesn't convey sufficient information, but please be feel free, uh, feel free to ask questions and if I can answer them, and I'm not saying that I can answer them because this is already going pretty deep already. Okay, uh, Daniel, uh, yeah. how accurate uh, uh, can they detect twins? You know, identical twins, can, the, can there be any error? I would... No, that's interesting. Um, I would say that, um, yeah, it's difficult, okay? Uh, I would say that uh, there is a good enough possibility that the, that the twins can be mistaken for each other, okay? Uh, but you, you, you see basically, yeah, uh, this can only do what is given to it. If you give it, if you give the algorithm sufficient photos or sufficient information to tell between the twins, then it's very possible. But if you don't give it sufficient uh, information, then of course it will not be able to tell, you know, uh, it will not be able to tell. So the key thing uh, is that this algorithm or this new uh, generation of algorithms they can, they can recognize a face up to 99.95 or in some even 99.98% uh, certainty, okay? But that all depends if your database is sufficiently large enough and uh, well-defined enough to distinguish that. You cannot give it bad data, train it on bad data, and then expect it to do well. Okay, so if you have twins, then one twin actually has certain differences which, which are quite visible. Then, yeah, it can, it, it can, it can distinguish the face just like any other face. Uh, but again, uh, that is if there are visible differences. Uh, if there are no visible differences, then I would say it, it's not really, uh, you know, it, it won't be possible. Uh. But uh, the way I see it, uh, the banks are having uh, great confidence in this uh, face recognition. Because now uh, you can enter, uh, you know, the, using the apps, uh, you mm -hmm. can easily go into the banks, uh, you know, you, you can log into your account. They have, uh, that way I think uh, they have great confidence in, in face uh, recognition. That, you know, that depends, again, I, I, I say, la, if you give the algorithm sufficient information to make the distinction, fine, okay? But if you, have, if you don't give the, the, the algorithm sufficient information data, it cannot come out with the data itself, okay? The process of training a CNN or any combination of CNNs for recognition is that somehow or other, it finds a, a, a point where it is, it can distinguish, it can say that this face belongs to this face. So it depends on the date, the reference data. If the reference data cannot be, then there's, there's no way. And uh, I would say that banks would have to use a, more than just facial recognition if, if there's twins involved. Lah. Okay, uh, you probably want to pair it with what, what handphone he's carrying. You know, maybe there's also, you can also make the assumption that his handphone is, uh, he didn't give his handphone to his twin to, you know, pretend not there. But even if he does give his handphone to his, his, uh, his twin, uh, so what it is with his consent? So there are all these, these ways around. Uh, uh, but I can, say, I can say definitely that it's all a function of the training. Of the if you cannot see the difference, then odds are 
the algorithm cannot tell the difference either. Yeah, maybe I maybe I, I just sure, can sure, clarify sure. a bit. La. If you are using a passport, la, the passport identify you. So the facial recognition will get all the facial data, see whether how close it matches you. So maybe it match you 99%, 98%, or 97% if you accept, then okay. If you are very stringent, uh, then 95 also you don't accept. Then this person cannot come in. So they already know who you are. If you are using a phone, then your phone will have a ID. So you you scan, a, maybe a phone display a QR code, you scan to say who you are. Or your phone has a Bluetooth, and then you go near, it detect you. Then the thing will identify you. You, you cannot just use a face uh, on the roadside and then you identify this fella. They are too close. Even a photograph also, they, they are inside. And then, so you, you cannot just, as what Paul saying us, uh, you cannot just use the face alone. You must use the IC, uh, fingerprint, or, or you tell them who you are. You tell the bank who you are, then the bank will use the face to ver verify who you actually are. Not like that. Oh, so answer posing or not? Yeah, I think you you answer it very well. <laughs> but I was told uh, that if you take a photograph, uh, uh, they are able the, the to detect that it is uh, fake, you know. Somehow they need the real face uh, because of three uh, D effect, you know. No, 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 no. Facebook, Facebook can because if somebody take a photograph and then uh, upload to Facebook, Facebook will inform all these people whose faces are inside that photograph. Even you happen to be a stranger standing next next to the group, uh, he will also inform you that hey you are in this group because you are a facebook user if you are not a facebook user they won't know who you are because you are a facebook user you already log in so they know your gps location they know you are there and this photo is also in the same area so they they can confirm that otherwise it's very difficult no because you just look at the the, the percentage, uh, it's only zero to hundred, and there are six billion people in this world. How to get? <laughs> so in a nutshell, uh, the face is not like a fingerprint. Okay, uh, it can recognize people to a very high degree, but it is not unique in the sense that you know nobody else in the world has the same fingerprint that you have. Daniel, I have one yes. question. Um, yeah. Assuming that the system is trained um, you know, using a full face of a person, and then what happens if the same person puts on mask and sunglasses? Will the system be able to identify this person? Uh, uh, in a nutshell, uh, not really. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm dealing with a couple of issues because what you all just mentioned, wearing masks, another one is what we call lifeness detection. It's actually some things that have already been considered or are in the process of being considered uh, in uh, fa face recognition technology. Okay, uh, it's somewhere on this slide too, just a bit further on. Okay, so if you allow me to proceed, I shall get there. Thanks. Okay. Okay, the last one, uh, and the reason why I put it is, uh, it's interesting because it tells you exactly what a feature is. Uh, the DLIP facial landmark detector. The DLIP, which I said is one of the libraries, which is closed open CV, has this, uh, actually scans the face and uses a, C a, a, a convolutional neural network to detect 68 points, and these are the 68 points it tries to de develop from the tip of the ear, one left uh, right ear, to the tip of the right, left ear, 17, 
to the tip of the nose. So after it has this uh, numbers of your face, I think the numbers it store is the is the what now? Is the magnitude? Is the magnitude as well as the direction of that particular uh, point? After it, it's detected these numbers, it stores that into a vector. So from that vector, you can see that it basically has a measurement of your entire face. Okay, and this is one of the original means where people try to use face detector. Remember in the 18th or 19th century, they have those big calipers that they put around people's head. This is basically it, but in a digital sense. Okay, so this is the, the third uh, feature extracted to describe the face. Okay, now summarily, what I hear. Okay, the last part of it is face recognition. And as I said, you have the query, uh, the query vector, as well as a reference image database from which you can you are supposed to find the the closest matching to the query query image here. Okay, uh, so now the face recognition process is you must figure out some way to determine which is the closest match. Now, this obviously de depends on a, a, a few factors. For example, how fast you want to do it, how big is your database, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, so some some algorithms are uh, some some ways that you can you know say that the query vector is closer to this other vector is by actually figuring out the distance and the distance itself. There are several distances. I only named four of them here. So you can understanding the, the study of what constitutes distance in, in, a, vector, uh, in a matrix space is quite complicated. Uh, you have L1, L2, cosine, and Hamming. Um, or you can say, sorry, or you can say that where in the vector space is the, where in the reference, which reference data, uh, which reference point is the query image point closest to? And that can be determined by considering, for example, SVC. SVC is, is faster than this because calculating the distance basically means you need to calculate the difference between the query vector and every single reference image. So if you've got 10,000, that is 10,000 every query image, which is kind of taxing la, on the computer. La. Another way is vector space. This is a bit faster because it actually tells, uh, it actually tells you where the... Uh, tells you how, clo how close to which space you are, okay? And the third, the last way is to actually have trees. Trees is you can very uh, quickly figure out uh, which is the closest reference uh, vector to the query vector. So these are all way, or just different ways of telling, of matching the query image with which particular image in the reference database. And that is the process of facial recognition. Face recognition, and that's the last point in face recognition. Okay. Okay. Now we have it. There are a few issues about face recognition that must be discussed about life for any, I mean, to have a more, a better understanding of it. But before I carry on, are there any questions of the, of the, how the algorithm is implemented? No, uh. Okay, there are four issues which I can think of. Okay, uh, there are probably a lot more than this, but I can think of four. Okay, the first one and definitely the biggest problem is training. Now, training is a process of actually de developing this database of features. Now, like for example, uh, Training takes input reference data and converts it to a form that allows for answering queries. Okay. Issues with training. If you train uh, the reference database uh, based on amorphous, uh, then what's going to happen? So when you try to recognize Chinese face or uh, Afro, no, African faces, uh, then it's a, bit, it's a bit less accurate. I wouldn't say it's totally inaccurate, but it's less accurate. So it's so inaccurate that, uh, that somehow or other, oh dear, hang on. 
Ah, here it comes. Some or other uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the US government study confirms most face recognition is not a racist. Okay, why is it racist? If you train your database and it so happens that you have uh, more black people than white people in a particular database of, uh, of prisoners, then of course, uh, the next time a black face comes out, it's more probable that that black face will be classified as a, as a criminal. Okay, so uh, this also applies to, to men and women also. Uh, if you train everything on men, then it's harder to recognize women because simply because that there is less women in the database. Okay. Incoming voice call. Are you is anybody trying to call me? Stop really. Okay. Uh, so Hello? Hello? Okay, sorry. So you can see, uh, training the training the database is very uh, is very difficult to do. Um, somebody is calling me. Sorry, yeah. Uh, hello? Hello? Okay, I don't know why. So you can see, yeah, uh, it's quite difficult to do. So to be a, to have a fair database, you need to um, have, I mean, to recognize people fairly across all, all races and all sexes, etc you actually need a more um, you actually need a more fair training database you go on okay and there is a problem sorry something is buzzing i'm not sure what it is okay and also, when you train, it's not simply to put one or two or three or four images. Ideally, there should be 20 to 30 uh, images for training one face. Okay. And of course, the solution to is to, I mean, I can think of a solution now, but uh, Basically, you cannot escape 20 to 30 images. Lah. It's just how do you extract the 20 to 30 images really. Okay, so that alone, these two alone, you can see that the quality of the algorithm is very, very dependent on the, on the training. Okay. Now, you should breath mask. Uh, the recent solution now there are two ways now either you have your face with a breath mask or you can actually simulate a breath mask on an existing photo a simulate just basically means uh, you put a rectangle over or something like that uh, and then you simulate the breath mask and then you train from there uh, it works uh, it's not perfect, but it works. B because you, you, you have to understand that uh, the full face is used to, to uh, express, goes into a vector, just like remember you saw this, uh, like this part here. The whole face is used to express the, ve the feature vector. So if you cover half of this, huh, that means the training is only on this part alone. So that uh, it may work, uh, but it won't be as accurate because usually the more features you can train on, the better. But it will work. 
if you go to that uh, that website that I previously showed you, the Pi Image Search, uh, there are already tutorials available on how to uh, how to how to do with a breath mask. Uh. Okay, light conditions. I've got a light on, but if I don't have a light staring me in the face, my my picture will be something like that. So. Uh, a lot of cameras actually have a problem with darkness. They just don't show as much light. Um, so obviously the way to read this is to actually pre-process this picture and to so that all the all the features get done. You're not going to be able to get much features on here because everything is evenly black. Okay. Now there are a few ways you can do it. Uh, is generally called low light image enhancement. You can either play the gamma adjustment, do something called a log tran transformation uh, algorithm, uh, that or uh, what what is uh, recommended as uh, no what what is called image inversion, which basically you image invert the whole image But when you invert the that means from black you change to white and white you change to black something like that, and then you remove the haze because that will automatically result in a lot of haze. So you remove the haze from that. And there, there are several other more complicated algorithms, but there exist algorithms that can actually uh, show, uh, that can actually improve the lighting conditions. Now. So low light image is also another con problem. And finally, liveness detection. Okay. Okay, there are many ways around liveness detection. Uh, I've not done all of them. Uh, you see, uh, texture analysis, frequency analysis, variable focusing analysis. Uh, okay, I've done this. Check the picture for eye movement, lip movement, and blink detection. That means uh, once you have recognized the face, you wait, your program actually wait for one of these things to happen. And if all three happen, even better. Okay, but the problem with this is that yeah, it takes it does take uh, processing time while you're waiting for the blink to happen, or the lip to happen, or the eye movement to happen. Another way is optical flow algorithm, uh, and to actually check out the three D phase of shape, and or a combination of all these. So you can do enough algorithms here to make sure that they don't put a uh, fit or a photo in order to make sure i mean if they on the other hand put a, actually a live photo that means through the handphone or what then maybe something a texture analysis or frequency and texture analysis or frequency analysis will be able or this top th first three will be able to tell uh, with different types of uh, different types of uh, if, if i mean we tell between uh having the face on a on a on the smartphone. See, uh, this also is in that Pi Image Search, uh, Pi Image Search uh, website. So, if you really want to go into this, this is a wonderful place to start. How do I get back? Okay. Uh, any questions? on these issues. Because after this, I'll just be going to applications uh, away from the technical aspects of it. And, uh, and yeah, that maybe, maybe a few they need to go toilet again. Again? Uh? Okay, so I need to come, we all need to come back again. Uh? Minutes, uh. No, you, you got any, anybody want to ask him question? Okay, then I uh, come back again. Uh. Come back again. Uh. You're going to okay. think uh, what ask. Then uh, go toilet, then come back again and ask questions. Okay, bye-bye. No, bye-bye. Come back.